Titus chapter 1 verse 2 says, In hope of eternal life which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. The God that is described in this King James Bible here is a God that cannot lie. Lying is a sin. He can't lie. But non-dispensational professing Christians try to make God into a liar. Let me demonstrate. Matthew chapter 10, verse 5 and 6. Then, then, excuse me, these twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Verse 7, And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Ephesians chapter 3. Go on back to Ephesians chapter 3. Verse 1. For this calls I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you. Wait a second. Um, Jesus said not to go into the way of the Gentiles, but only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Um, that's a problem, isn't it? Verse 3. How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. The false, non-dispensational Baptist out there will tell you that the gospel's always been the same. It's never changed. They just call, called Paul, who's speaking under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, they just called Paul a liar. He said it wasn't revealed in other ages. Hmm. Verse 6, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 6. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me who am less than least of all saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Who is right? Jesus Christ said don't go into the way of the Gentiles. Paul said I'm sent to the Gentiles. Who's right? You say they're both right. It can't be if you're non-dispensational. Hmm. And what do we read there in verse 2? If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God. Dispensation is a Bible word. And yet these heretics come out and they say, we are non-dispensational. Then you're denying Scripture. And did Paul ever preach the gospel of the kingdom of heaven? Could you show me one time in the Pauline epistles where he ever preaches the kingdom of heaven? They'll say, well, dispensationalists preach other, you know, multiple plans of salvation. Yeah, in different dispensations, that's true. We don't preach multiple plans of salvation for the one that we are currently in, what we call the church age. You read through the Bible, they're sacrificing animals here in the Old Testament. New Testament, there are no animal sacrifices. Why? Because it's a different dispensation. They weren't wrong and in sin sacrificing animals in the past when they should have been believing in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ didn't show up yet. And yet the non-dispensationalists will tell you that they were preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. They'll say the gospel has always been the same. Adam and Eve needed to believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ to be saved. And they'll try to skirt it, they'll try to get around, but that in reality is what they're trying to get through. Why? Because they're trying to teach that God's a liar. They're trying to teach that God's word contradicts. God's word does not contradict. The King James Bible has no contradictions in it. When you rightly divide it. When you follow the command in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Let's read that. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Proper understanding of Scripture requires division of Scripture. And you will never understand this King James Bible until you divide it according to the different dispensations. You'll never understand it. And what these stinking heretics will do, the non-dispensational heretics, they'll try to say, well, it was only a recent invention, dispensational teaching. And yet they'll leave out the fact that many of even the false church fathers taught different dispensations and different times and, and, and things like that. It's been taught for centuries. It's not a new invention. And not to mention the fact, the Bible itself teaches it. See, these non-dispensational people will use the same tactic that Roman Catholicism teaches. 
they'll say, well, we can't handle the scriptures, so we'll just have to throw in some divine tradition. That's what they do. But let me show you an even better one to prove that there is there are different dispensations. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, under the praise of his glory. Okay? You are sealed as a Christian. When you get saved, you are given eternal life, and you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. What do we read at the beginning? God that cannot lie. God cannot lie. Okay, remember that. Turn back to Revelation chapter 14. Revelation chapter 14, verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Wait a second here. Ephesians chapter 1 said, we're sealed until the day of redemption. Promised by the Holy Spirit. Over here, any man takes a mark, whosoever worships the beast, they go to hell. What do you do about that? Again, non-dispensational heretics will say, well, it's all teaching the same thing, so we'll just have to twist the scriptures and make it teach the same thing. Dispensationalists say, no, wait a second. Paul is writing to Christians in the body of Christ. The rapture happens and you have a new group that shows up, saints in the time of Jacob's trouble. Some people call them tribulation saints. That's not really actually, actually the right term. But saints in the time of Jacob's trouble. And they can't take the mark. And you read over in the book of Hebrews, you have people that are falling away, and it's impossible to renew them again to repentance. Who's that talking about? Saints in the time of Jacob's trouble. Right now, there is nothing that you can take that's going to make you lose your salvation. But in the book of Revelation, chapter 14, there will be. You take the mark of the beast in the future. Say, why are you getting so heated about this? Because in the future, when the rapture happens and these false non-dispensational papists are left behind, they're going to be preaching eternal security. They'll take you back to Ephesians chapter 1 and say, hey, you're sealed. What if I take the mark? Well, I don't know, but you're not going to lose your salvation because you're sealed. You see? They'll cross dispensational lines and come back here to the Pauline epistles to teach you that you can take the mark of the beast and be fine. And yet they'll also seem to skip uh, verse 12 in Revelation 14. Here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Two parts to your salvation in the time of Jacob's trouble. Faith and works. What's the works? Don't take the mark. You better study dispensational teaching and not listen to anybody that's trying to teach you that dispensationalism is a great heresy and things like this. Mark it down. Anybody that is against dispensational teaching, I didn't say that they're ignorant of it. Many people are ignorant of it. I was ignorant of it at one point in time. I didn't know what dispensational teaching was. I started to study it. The Lord opened my eyes and I went, Wow, that's how the whole scripture works. That's how things work together. But anybody that knows about it, they're not ignorant. They know about it and they reject dispensational teaching and they say we are non-dispensational. They're lost. Simple test. Very simple test. They are preaching a false gospel that there is. it's always been the same. People have always had faith in Jesus Christ even before he came to the earth. They're justified by faith. Faith in what? Ask them. Ask them. Say, you know, I dealt with one of these heretics recently from Stephen Andersnake's cult, and uh, I said to him, were they justified? Did they always preach the same thing? Yes, they've always, the gospel has always been the same. They've always been justified by faith alone. Okay? What was the faith in? The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4? They'll say, oh, they were saved by looking forward to the cross. 
Absolute total lie. Jesus' disciples rejected it when Jesus told them what was going to happen to him. I'm going to go up to Jerusalem. They're going to crucify the Son of Man. I'm going to be buried and raised again the third day. And they're going, be it far from me. <laughs> they weren't saved by looking forward to the cross. That's a lie. Non-dispensational Christians are liars. And they want to make God a liar. Why? Because their father is the father of lies. Mark it down. Non-dispensational professing Christians are not saved. They are false and they're trying to damn you as well. Watch out for them.